I was an executive assistant for a real estate developer. And he had a nightly poker game and he said to me, part of your duties of being my assistant is gonna be to help me at this poker game. And I went home and I, I really wanted to do whatever job it was, I wanted to do it well. So I was Googling, what kind of music do poker players like to listen to? What do they like to eat? What do I do with the, these people? <laughs> and so I made this really embarrassing mix CD of songs like The Gambler. And I bought a cheese plate and I you know, put on my best dress and, and I walked into this room and it became very clear to me that this was a massive opportunity. A massive opportunity to network um, first, first off the bat. I was a girl from a small town in Colorado. I was in my early 20s, and all of a sudden I was in a room with the most famous you know, sports stars that we see on television, A-list actors, heads of studios, politicians, billionaires, uh, Wall Street guys. I mean, it was, it was incredible. And I realized that this is not an opportunity that most 23-year-olds from small town that just wanted a, 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 a you know a, a year off get, and so I really wanted to re I really wanted to be able to stay. So even though I knew nothing about poker, um, I was faking it. You know they would say something to me. It would be like in a foreign language, and I would just Google what the poker term was, and you know just nod. And and so that was my introduction. The people that played in these games were. A-list actors, uh, Wall Street titans, famous sports stars, um, heads of studios, politicians, uh, you know, the, some of the most powerful people in the world. And it was the company everyone wanted to be in. In my poker games, these guys were playing poker and I was playing the room. Um, what I love about the movie that, that Aaron Sorkin wrote and directed is that there are certainly highly entertaining scenes um, about gambling that even people that don't have a background can understand and people that do will enjoy. But he connected it something to so much, so much bigger. There's so much humanity in this story and there's so many relatable storylines um, that take something very shiny and connect it to the human condition. And I just was amazed at how well he was able to navigate that. It was very touching. In 2011, um, I was on the way to one of my, my games, and one of my dealers called me and said, don't come here, the feds are here. Um, I threw my stuff, my cash, grabbed my beagle, got on a plane, I logged into my accounts, and they all read negative $9,999,000 in the red. They shut me down. The, the feds seized my assets. And when I called Bank of America <laughs> to inquire why I had negative $30 million, they said there's a note here to call the U.S. District Attorney's Office. At that time, the district attorney said, you know, I had an attorney call and, and they said, we want to talk to, we want to know what your client knows. We want to talk to her about what she knows and we can have that conversation about um, unfreezing her assets. Well, I didn't do that. I just went, I went away. That was the last game that I ever ran. The government wanted information and they also wanted me to answer for the crime. There was a lot of money changing hands, and there was people committing crimes that, you know, in, in other realms of their life, and it, but it all sort of connected here. The Ponzi scheme in L.A., the um, insurance fraud scheme with the Russians in, in New York, the, the, the bookmaking operation, it was just all sort of connected. The Wall Street crimes, the celebrities behaving badly. The connection point that they found was me even though I wasn't a part of any of these things. But they thought, small town girl, Colorado, a woman running this poker game, she's gonna talk to us about anything we wanna know and she's gonna have a treasure trove of information. And I think that that, I think that's where we're at. I don't wanna take away from the fact I broke the law. 
right? I have to own that. That's the truth. But in terms of the 17 FBI agents and throwing me into a Russian mob indictment and the RICO, I mean, you know, I think there was more to it than, than a gambling charge. The reason that I didn't become a confidential informant for the government is I didn't know about people that were committing heinous crimes. I didn't know anyone that was a, you know, a sex trafficker, a murderer, burglar. I didn't know any of that. I would have spoken to them happily about that. What I knew was gossip. And what I knew was... You know, not these egregious, egregious crimes. And the way that I saw it, I knew the risk I was taking. I profited greatly from this risk. I made these choices. And at the end of the day, I got in trouble for these choices. So um, stepping on other people, ruining other people's lives in order to save myself seemed, it seemed like what, a, a, a very uncourageous. It, it didn't seem courageous. It seemed um, wrong, it just seemed wrong. She's so versatile and she's such an extraordinary talent. And again, you know, it made it even more special that in her real life, she is so, so moral and courageous and fearless and such a crusader for justice. Uh, so I, I was over the moon, I can't think of anyone better. And then when I saw her play me, I was blown away because we didn't even get to spend that much time together. But she got things about this story and about how I was feeling in those moments, these nuanced, intricate things that were incredible. And I know that anyone that watches this movie is gonna see what an incredible, incredible performance it is, but I really know what an incredible performance it is. It certainly was a man's world, there's no question. No women played, um, and to my knowledge, you know, there's no women running big games. And that was exciting, for sure. Um, and, you know, I think I, I, I think I learned a lot. I think I acquired a skill set that is applicable in other ways. So I'll take that part, and, and also the lessons. The lessons of um, success has to be defined by something other than your bank account or, 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 you know, what car you drive or what people think about you. And so I had to redefine power as an inside thing. My family loved the film. I was nervous. I was very nervous. Um, particularly for the scenes with my dad. But my dad has been incredibly gracious. He loved the movie. At the Denver premiere, he invited 50 of his closest friends. And he's so proud. And, um, you know, they, it, it's hard to explain how, how we all felt. It's so deeply emotional. <laughs> because this isn't just a movie for us, you know, my, my parents have been scared for a long time. They've been worried for a long time. Not, and, and I think there was certainly a point where my brothers and my family thought, how is she ever gonna be okay again? And I think seeing this movie, I think sitting in Toronto and seeing this movie and you know, listening to the audience laugh and cry and clap and seeing you know, the way that Aaron and Jessica and Idris spoke about it and seeing how beautiful this movie is, was just was just comfort for them that that things are okay you know that there is a second chance